fuck do you have a pin on for? It's my dad's. Oh. It's a Yankee pin. I guess it's... At least we know how to spell things in New York. Socks is S-O-C-K-S. Red socks with an X. Who the fuck wears a pin anymore? Hey, welcome back to Stupid <laughs> Raggedy's and Corbin. <laughs> I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Get the gun off! Thanks on Patreon. Follow us on Twitter, subscribe, and hit the like button. Woo! -hoo! Oh, oh. Oh dear. Have you touched yourself today? Yep. Twice. I, like shampooing and and, and and soaping up. Soaping up. I don't know. <laughs> Lathering up. Lather. I don't know why. Soaping up works. I didn't take any exception to it. But I've never said soaping up. And well, it's a new day. Soaping up. Loofing. Uh, yeah, I'm not a fan. Not a fan. I mean, that's fine, but I just... I don't, I don't like loofahs. What do you have against no. loofahs? You ever you just, grown a loofah? Grown one? No. They actually, it's yeah. a loofah plant. I, I, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's yeah, a living thing. But no. Because you know what happens? Crazy. They and the other things, they just they start to get mildewy. Yeah, if you don't... Anyways. Anyways, today we're doing a movie review. <laughs> and we're doing a review of the uh, 2008 film... Subamaniarapuram. That's what I'd say. How would you say it? That was really close. Subramaniapuram. 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 Uh, directed, written. Subramaniapuram. Directed, written, and produced by M. Sasi Kumar. Uh, and it was the the reason we know this one. Oh, we've seen songs and stuff, but we know this was. Anurag's inspiration, uh, at least he said, uh, one right. of the big inspiration films for him of making his Gangs of Wasper, which we have seen as well. Uh, you guys could go check out our review of those two films. Well, one film, I guess, that he split into two parts. Uh, but yes, it's a 2008 Tamil film uh, starring a whole bunch of different people. But I think at least at the time, they didn't, there wasn't any big stars, SSM at. Sasi Kumar is also starring in this as mm -hmm. well. Uh, so it's a big... big he, he was highly invested in director, <laughs> producer, actor. He yeah. was like, I'm going to go all in yep. <laughs> and do it all. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this will be 100 cents for if you haven't watched it. Uh, we saw... Mm. It's, it was actually difficult to come by with English subtitles. I think it was on eh, Eros. Eros, it was, but there was a better quality also somewhere else that we watched it as well. But, yes. Uh, once again, 100 minutes more. If you've ever watched it, go watch it. Come back. Rick, your initial thoughts, please. There is a, a show on HBO Max called The Event, Wolfgang Puck Catering. And when you watch, like, there's this one episode where they're, they're doing the SAG Awards, and Wolfgang Puck is catering both the meal during the show and then the after party right next door. But it's all in the Shrine Auditorium. And it's a perfect analogy for me of the movie mm. because the catering of this event begins with the Shrine Auditorium being bare bones and they're just setting things up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then in the second half, everything goes wild and you're, you're, you are loving what took place. And yeah. that is exactly, this movie for me was the first half is you just have to patiently let mm -hmm. it set the table. Yeah. And then in the second half, that's when everything really starts. You 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 can't have the second half without the first half. No, they really the first half is really setting up all the relationships, it's all it. the motives, it's just setting up the, the event, uh, and they do take their time with it. And it, I, I enjoyed this film, especially I did too. the I second really half. Like it. The second half, I second love half. the second half. Um, and I, I I guess it's similar to uh, Gangs of Wasper because I enjoy the second part. Of Gangs of Wasseper mm -hmm. more than I enjoyed the first part of Gangs of Wasseper. Uh, granted, I should I need to go back and rewatch Gangs anyway. Yeah, me too. Um, because that was really like, really that, early especially on, especially the first part. Yeah, and then we waited like was that our first Anurag film? It might have been. I think it was. It might directly because it was like the especially. legend. Yeah, especially. Um, but yeah, this is it. One it 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 it, it the beginning is like. I don't know if I'm invested in these people yet. Right, exactly. Obviously, I, I got concerned that I'm not going to care. Obviously, it's it's um, 
I don't think it's in, like the lowest of budgets, but it's not what Anurag had for for gangs. Even though I don't think he had a massive amount for gangs, um, it wasn't um, anything like that. And you could tell, like in some of the fight scenes or some of the kills, you could be like, uh, I, I bet they wish they had more money there, or right? Whatever. And they also, I don't know if it was a choice or if it was budgetary. The the way it was shot, whether it was like almost found footage, right? It, exactly. I don't know if that was purposeful. Might have been, uh, or if it was just this is the best camera I could have I gotten mean, at the time, right from the get go. I mean, the very first opening frame is the POV of. Uh, the the prisoner who you find out later is actually yeah. um, um, Kasi, and uh, that's what I'm referring to. My, so many names of the characters oh, I can't yeah. memorize. I've got them. <laughs> I've got them on my phone. But the minute they show that, it's a, it's a very. It's obviously just a camera being held, and it doesn't have the stabilizer on it. And I thought, okay, this is what we have. Yeah, and yeah. That, that happened multiple times in terms of like some of the really good filmmaking. On like, I think that actually brings out some of the best filmmaking when you don't have it does Brahmastra or PS One money. Right, you have to be even creative. though those are those are amazing in their own right, and that's a whole different style of filmmaking. But you have to be so creative with your director and your DP. Yeah, of like how to come up with a shot that conveys what you want it to convey and uh that's new innovative and interesting exactly and they did that especially in the second like the the final frame um one shot oh yeah where they where uh what's his face was yeah. being once again spoilers once the guy was being murdered and he followed this one guy who betrayed him yes right there at the end yes for the entire time while he was like they didn't show the kill which i was actually kind of sad about uh, like, but they showed the other kills. Um, but they followed him for a long time. Yes, and I, I really enjoyed that part. I did but, too, and I enjoyed. There was for as, for lack of a better term, under budget it was per se for the the camera work. Yeah, I really loved in the second half the foot race through the streets and through the buildings. Uh, that that was really difficult cinematography, yeah. Especially when you consider what they weren't able to do. Yeah, the running through the buildings and then they they're following them and then they stop and pull back and the guys who are chasing them come and they just sit in the corner and go. I thought that was a great great shot. Yeah, and I thought everybody a uh, in the film actually did really well. I, I don't I don't really think there was uh, a weak link uh, in this, which it goes. I believe to, they were who these people were. Yeah, it was like it was like once again almost found footage almost. Like, yeah, I bet. Like that guy who was the 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 cripple. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. That's probably not politically correct. I apologize. I don't know what to call it. But the guy, he the was guy really with the, good with, with polio. Yeah. It, yeah. Is that what he had? Did he have yeah, polio? Yeah. It, okay. it said it said in the story breakdown that it was polio. Obviously, and, and a man actually had polio at some uh, point in his life. Dum Dump guy, I think his character name was. Um, he actually it, had polio. Probably uh, must have because he clearly I, that that clearly was real. They, they cast a guy who has a. And he was a good life. actor. Yeah, he did I a great he did job. a really good job. And yeah. I also thought his character was so interesting in what they did. But yeah, it's for if you have a smaller budget, that's what you have to rely on. Your 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 writing, your directing, and your actors. Correct. Uh, and your and your yeah, your writing, your story. Yeah, and conveying what you want to convey. And I thought all the characters did really good job. And even though in the first part you're like, I don't know. After you get past the second part, you're like, I needed. All of that yep. in the first half. Exactly. To appreciate what happened in the second half. And I was concerned that in the first half, the story was just going to remain as simple as it is. Because in the first half, what you basically have are these four guys that don't have jobs. They're doing what they do. And there's the love story. And that's really about it. But in the second half, it gets downright Shakespearean. Mm -hmm. it, becomes a, it becomes about revenge and avenging and betrayal, and it happens multiple times over. So it goes from this, it, I, that's why I thought of it afterwards. I said, it reminds me as an analogy, when you watch this one episode of the Wolfgang Puck Catering, the Shrine Auditorium is just this empty, basic, nothing going on hall. And slowly it's transformed and you see now you, you you couldn't have the event without this basic kind of boring thing and the monotony of here are the ingredients and here are the plates and here are the floral arrangements and here are the designated people doing it and here's the hot area. And you're like, OK, well, and then once it gets going and Wolfgang Puck shows up and he's tasting the food and then he has to make a special pizza for Leonardo DiCaprio and he's doing his thing. And then when it's all done and the smoke clears, you're like, dang, that was pretty cool. Yeah. 
That's a perfect analogy. For and this. I, I like the girl too, the love interest. I yeah, like, I, did too. I, I like their whole storyline, even though it's like, girl, you really shouldn't be with him. Like he's, I know it's like what, but obviously, if her entire life is just filled with a bunch of not good people. Well, and she said they justified it in the writing when they, the, when she's asked, you know, what do you see in this guy who's mm. just bad news? And she said, well, I've known him since I'm a little kid, and I guess I just still have hope for him, yeah. which makes it all the more tragic and sad when she sets him up and she's just hitting her head and singing oh god oh that god part, man yeah that, that 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 was like some of my favorite parts me too that, that great whole, like, moment oh my god she <laughs> and then they were like cut him up and they were just like beating him senseless yep and, th- and was, she's the one who set him up there were some really good kills in this for being a low budget agreed in film too agreed um in terms, like you could see some of the inspiration in terms of style that Anya had. In terms yeah. of like, if you haven't seen Gangs, once again, go go ahead like five seconds. Like, yeah, no, you're gonna say you're gonna say Nawaz. a spoiler, but yeah, the Nawaz moment the, is the, that that's the rickshaw moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that's probably where he got that yeah, inspiration. He's like, I'm gonna take it up a notch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I like that. I was like, oh, this is good. Yeah, me I like, too. <laughs> me too. I and like I was it. hoping when he started doing it and he wasn't gonna stop and the blood is squirting, I'm like go all the way decapitate mm-hmm. him and sure enough that's what he did yeah so yeah. I, uh, I really enjoyed that um the whole yeah just the whole second half it's like the first hour to hour and a half almost because this is what two hour two and a yeah, half 225 uh yeah. yeah two and a half hour film um you just i mean there's some stuff like there's some kills happening and there's some there's some and the songs, songs. are great the songs, songs and great. the music are great gorgeous songs um but you're you're relatively slow in compared to what you get in the second half, and you and you are concerned about caring about them because for the most part you're like, okay, all right, okay, and then thankfully it it you like the moment I knew I was caring was that moment when she betrays him and you see the look in his eyes he's got that william wallace look Mm -hmm. in his eyes of i've been betrayed by somebody who i thought loves me Mm -hmm. and she's heartbroken because she knows this is what she had to do but she still loves him and then the it goes all the way you know beautiful bookend of the film because at the beginning we don't know who the pov is that we've got that gets stabbed but then they bring it full circle and you realize it's the guy who the, everybody betrays everybody and what um god i'm because i watched it i want to say like five or six days ago right um but the how did it end um, what was the exact ending it like, ends it ends let me read you the note here because it doesn't end at the one shot it ends with um so No, it, it ends with Dumka avenging the betrayal and the killing of Paramon. And he walks into Kasi, who's been stabbed and is laying in the bed. And he takes his mask of his life support oh, yeah. oxygen that's off. That's right, that's right, that's right. And then he comes out of the hospital and walks away. Okay, yeah, I remember once they didn't end, because that's what I was, I was, there was something about the ending that I wanted to talk about. Um because after because i love the one shot yeah and well, like when they just were like he betrayed him now right and he's gonna die and they did a one shot with him just in the background getting murdered yeah and him just walking contemplating what just happened throwing stuff out throwing stuff away figuring out what he's gonna do next and i loved it and i was like okay end here yeah end here and then it kept going and i was like mm, i hate when people don't end on the strongest note and <laughs> I get why they, they they brought that the that back and it was a good moment and I I, yeah. I liked it. I didn't mind it. But I I I always wish films would end on the strongest possible moment. So you didn't think that was a strong I think it was. And I think it's fine okay. that it was in there. Yeah. I, it's not the worst. I I there's way more endings that I hate sure. more than that. It's just if if I was the director of this and I get why they did that, but I I was like mm, maybe you didn't need that. I think it's needed because it brings not just the story full circle from where it started, but it shows you that this pattern of vengeance, betrayal, Keeps revenge, going. just it just it never dies. It just doesn't end with the death of somebody. It just yeah. keeps going year after year after year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like that. I just may I've I've always wanted films to end on the strongest possible moment because I think that leaves a lasting impression on people when yeah. you end on something 
oh my god in the film ends. it kind of did that for me watching him walk away and seeing him be the last surviving member of these guys and he's the one that they you know they just kind of faded out i kind of i yeah you like i that? liked it okay. yeah i like yeah that I, I didn't mind it i like it. after it ended i was like okay that's fine uh it's just i think i there was a different moment the one previous that i i think would have been better for me but overall man i thought it was a really good it lived up to it because we've heard a lot about this if you say a film is inspired the inspiration for one of the greatest indian films right of all time right I, i'd say in gangs of wasp where i think a lot of people can agree upon that even if you don't like on your rock <laughs> i think most people can agree it's probably one of the greatest indian films ever made yeah uh, <laughs> i mean it is it is it's just a is a really great film. Yeah. Um, so to have something be the inspiration for the the man who created Absolutely. it any, is any a lot of hype. Great, yeah, any great movie like that. Like, I don't know what was Francis Ford Coppola's inspiration other than the book to make The Godfather. But if there was a film that inspired him to do Godfather, I'd like to see that film. Anybody who's made a great classic film and tells you this movie inspired me, I'd, I'd like to see that movie. Like E.T.? Exactly. I wonder where he got that idea. Well, it wasn't inspired. It was just straight taken. Yeah. But it wasn't Spielberg. We know that. It was the writer. And she's <laughs> not said anything about it. Spielberg can go, I lie. I lie. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, I'm very glad we finally got to it. Me too. Um, so you guys can let us know what you thought about this film. What should be our next Tamil film that we should watch? Uh, please let us know down below.